When 56-year-old Robert Howarth, a tobacconist residing at a place called Church near Accrington, sadly passed away on Wednesday the 7th of February 1906, the fears of Dr Fox and Dr Greenhouse, as well as local government officials, became all too real. Now, what was originally thought to be cases of isolated food poisoning that had struck the residents within a small catchment area of Accrington within a district known as Woodnook, it would quickly transpire that the numbers were much higher than originally thought and to the horror of the authorities and public alike, it wouldn't just be Accrington that would be affected. The first reported cases of Thai-made food poisoning appeared in the Manchester Evening News on the 3rd of February, when it appears that a large number of sufferers had been medically treated in the town of Accrington, and more specifically, the Woodnook district. The medical officer of health, Dr Greenhouse, had visited all those affected, and it seemed they all had one thing in common. And upon investigating further, all those who had become ill had consumed locally bought tinned potted meat, which in this case was pork. Now being an affordable source of meat which was already pre-cut, it had a long shelf life, making it suitable as an emergency food supply should families struggle long term financially as it can be bought and stored for when needs must. What at first seemed to be a straightforward case, Dr Greenhouse having soon identified the cause of the wholesale poisoning to that of the potted meat, it didn't take him long to find the source of the supply. However, many more people would soon become ill, with entire families suffering from the effects. In the family of James Annis, there were four sufferers, the mother and the three children, and even the family catch, which had been fed some of the meat, suffered the same fate. All of them were suffering from distressing stomach pains, which were accompanied by vomiting and diarrhoea. Mr William Parkinson, a weaver living on Nuttall Street, Ackerton, along with his four children and wife, all suffered from the effects of time main poisoning, as did the Tapper family, with each complaining of great pain and severe sickness. By Monday, 4th of February, over 40 cases had been reported, with several of them being severe, and whilst the source of the poisoning had been quickly identified, authorities had become worried just as to how many households still had the contaminated meat on their premises. Now, the effects of the poisoning varied, with some becoming ill within an hour or so of eating the meat, whilst in others, a much longer time period had elapsed. Meanwhile, investigations were still ongoing as to the origin of the contamination, Dr Greenhouse had managed to identify the store from which the meat had been purchased, and it appears it came from the Woodnut Butchering Branch of the Accrington and Church Cooperative Society. The meat, which was boiled down by the society themselves and was placed inside tins for the distribution to several branches, was quickly withdrawn by store manager Mr Holmes, as well as the foreman of the butchering department. Analysis of the meat would later reveal the presence of a germ, but the source of the contamination could still not be found, and one theory was that it was already present in the tins before the potted meat was placed inside them, and rumours soon circulated that it may have been perhaps the washing up liquid used to clean the tins that was the cause of the poisoning, however this has never been determined. Professor Dalapine from the Manchester University along with Dr Greenhouse visited the society's premises and confirmed that the cause of the poisoning was indeed a germ and that the quality of meat and not the condition of the tins used to store the meat had been the root cause, with the pork being used being perfectly fresh prior to being placed inside the tins. By Saturday 10th of February, cases had multiplied, and doctors had been called to patients in Nuttall Street, Clement Street, Royd Street and Napier Street, as well as many others within the Woodnut District, but by now, people within the towns of Huncourt, as well as Church, had begun to fall ill. But as for poor Robert Howarth, he would be the only recorded case of death occurring from this poisoning. The inquest into the death of Mr Howarth had taken place on Wednesday 7th of February, the same day he had sadly passed away. Now it was reported that Mr Howarth, a tobacconist and newsagent of 11 Blackburn Road, had, along with other members of his family, eaten some of the potted meat. Around midnight he had begun to complain of pains in the stomach and began vomiting. Dr Fox was called for and he would attend to him up until his death. His youngest son, Robert, aged 14 years, also suffered in a similar manner, but fortunately he managed to recover. But more interestingly, it seems that his wife, as well as another son, who had also eaten some of the food, suffered from no ill effects. But by the 17th of February, 
no new cases had been reported and those that had been affected had begun to recover from their ordeal. However, this whole affair had caused quite a sensation in the town, leaving a lot of people anxious, especially those who were in the habit of eating potted meat. Both children and adults had suffered immensely, as had cats and dogs from eating the scraps of meat that had been thrown to them on the floor. Now whilst the authorities could never guarantee it, it was hoped that by quickly removing the contaminated meat from the shelves it had possibly saved the lives of others and had prevented much higher cases from occurring, but they didn't know exactly how much of the tainted meat was still in circulation. The Thai main poisoning cases over in nearby Hong Kong had meanwhile risen to just over 12, and it was eventually proven that the source was that at the same as over in Accrington. Now luckily none of the cases developed into anything more than stomach pains, vomiting and diarrhoea. Dr Dean, medical officer for Burnley, after investigating the cases would later announce all those affected had made a full recovery. Now a few months passed by and on Saturday 28th of July 1906, the Haslinden Gazette published an article where it was asked by Councillor Horrocks if the clerk could write to the Accrington and Church Industrial Society asking them if they could provide the council with a copy of the report into the reported poisoning and if they had taken any steps to prevent any reoccurrences. The clerk replied saying he had received a letter from Mr Greenwood, secretary of the Cooperative Society, saying that only two copies of the report submitted by the public analysis had been prepared, one of which had been sent to the Cooperative Union and the other having been submitted to the Burrett authorities within Accrington where the Cooperative Society's works were situated. And with regards to if any preventative measures had been put into place, the clerk produced a letter stating that Mr Reddish could reassure the council that the society were doing all they could in the matter and that the society were as anxious as any other person could possibly be. Councillor Muirhead would seemingly go on to criticise and praise society at the same time, asking, Do you consider that satisfactory? Does it comply with the wishes of this council? It seems strange thing to me that six months after this incident had happened that we should have to approach the society for information of this kind. Now details have appeared in the press, the public analysis report has been published and the society has settled the matter amicably by paying £464.13 to the sufferers. I take it that we, as a council, have been trying to admonish the society, but I think their attitude in the whole affair is worthy of the highest commendation. However, Councillor Horrocks asked, Is our medical officer perfectly satisfied with the statement given by the Cooperative Society? He doesn't know how it occurred yet. It may occur again for anything he knows. Do you think if it had been any other person we should have allowed the matter to drop? The society has notified the authorities in Accrington, but not the authorities in church. So far as the medical officer is concerned, and he is the person most interested and ought to know how it occurred, the reason and why and wherefore of the cases, he doesn't know anything at all about it. The clerk responded by saying, They don't refuse to furnish us with a copy of the report, but they haven't a copy. Alas, it seems that no report would ever be made public and considering over 200 people would suffer from chronic food poisoning, it seems amazing that this story would, in a way, be seemingly brushed under the carpet. Now I'm not saying the Cooperative or Accrington Council never got to the bottom of where the contamination came from, but the lack of information anywhere does seem to indicate that after a long absence of further outbreaks and in such large numbers, this case would simply fade away, unforgotten, but still very much lurking in the darkness. Other individual time main cases will be reported in the coming years, and whilst a few would make it into the newspapers, it was a common occurrence back in the early part of the 1900s for the lower classes to suffer from such cases. Ellen Lightbound, 1909, Mary Pilling, 1911, James Rawcliffe, also 1911, and Selina Kavinar, 1914. These are just four prominent cases that were investigated by officials and who had all perished from time main poisoning. Now interestingly, a report did appear in the Haslin the Gazette on Saturday 9th of March 1912, where it was reported that many claims had been made against the Accrington and Church Cooperative Society in regards to food poisoning with many instances of blackmail cropping up from time to time. To try and defend itself, the society tried to warn all its members saying it was imperative that they take advantage of the Federation Insurance Scheme which was around £1 a year. Now was the Cooperative Society trying to cover its own back? worried that another outbreak of time main poisoning, just like the one that took place back in February 1906, could possibly make a return. Now 
Now, we hope you like this story. It's something a little different to what we normally do. It's not concentrated just on one person or one family. Um, it's more of a local history, if you will. But if you did like this, you like this type of content, comment down below and tell me what your thoughts are. If you've got any updates on this story or any other stories that we've covered on the podcast, again, just comment down below and let me know. But in the meantime, guys, you can follow me on social media such as Twitter, Instagram. We do have a YouTube channel as well where we also go out and visit places where all our stories or a lot of our stories take place. So, yeah, you can uh, you can pop on over to YouTube and you can see those videos for yourself. But in the meantime, guys, as I always say at the end of these podcasts, take care, look after yourselves, and I will be back soon with another tale from the past. <laughs>